Guys, um, I am Ariel Shaw, founder and president of Southern Crescent Women in Business. We're going to go ahead and get started. Those who can jump in will be able to jump in at their leisure. It is 11.03 a.m. on Monday morning. Um, so we are talking about AI and your business. I know you guys have seen a lot of chatter about AI, and uh, we just really wanted to make sure, <clears throat> because there will be some industries that will absolutely be affected those who I know are in business and doing certain things. Um, so the, 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 I don't know if the word pivot is the right word, but definitely they're gonna have to make some adjustments. Um, so we have this morning with us, our member, Sandra Morse. She's uh, over 20 plus years, a tech veteran. Um, plus she uses the other side of her brain with art. And she'll tell you a little bit more about that. But uh, Southern Crescent Women in Business, we are a conglomerate of women-owned businesses and women in business in the Southern Crescent. I am Arielle Shaw, again, the founder and president. Our mission is to uh, basically support women-owned businesses and women in business. And Sandra and I have had many conversations about AI and what's happening. And I said, there's no way we cannot bring this forward to the ladies. Um, excuse me, Sandra Morris incorporates STEAM in her professional and personal life. She's a mom of two beautiful girls, co-owner of Paint and Pour Remix and PPR, ooh, PPR Art Gallery with her partner, Justin. And she has over 25 years of consulting and sales experience in the IT industry. She started her career in Northern New Jersey, which y'all will hear very well in her accent, in telecom sales, and since then has sold for companies such as Windstar, AT&T, Bell South, and Verizon Business. She's currently with an IT company as well, or a, what do we call that, a communications company in IT. Um, she has sold a vast majority of IT services ranging from fiber SDN WAN, security, equipment, and wireless services, to name a few. In her current role, she consults with companies and shows them how private networks are essential. Is that the VPN, I'm assuming, to support the industrial revolution or industry 4.0, which incorporates applications such as AI, robotics, virtual reality, and many of the industry trends coming down the pipeline. That will have a significant impact on our personal and business lives. And she is an active member of Southern Crescent Women in Business. And I am going to actually turn it over to her right now. Uh, Sandra, go uh, ahead. And take all right. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday to you all. Hope you all had a great weekend. And uh, so happy to be here with you, Ariel, and the women of Southern Crescent Business and Women. And uh, yeah, definitely excited to um, the opportunity to talk to you guys today about kind of AI and what's going on in the industry. You know, definitely want to make this kind of a high level discussion, but want to make it a conversational piece. So, you know, don't hesitate to ask any questions because um, I'm definitely be more here to help. So let me pull up the presentation. And we will be on our way. So essentially, yes. Our conversation today is how artificial intelligence can help you and your business. So again, Ariel, thank you so much for uh, the introduction. Yeah, as you can see, I'm a little bit of a steam junkie. And so many of you will probably know what the uh, words of steam is science, uh, science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Uh, so definitely, I am one that incorporates all of those attributes or parts of the business in, um, over the past 20 years of my career. And I definitely enjoy it. Um, essentially, the IT side, and as she stated, you know, being the co-owner of Port and Pay Remix, um, I'm able to incorporate the creative side of my brain, as I say, uh, along with the technology. But what's just so amazing is that you would think a world with art, where being creative would not be impacted by IT and technology, and it definitely is. And I'll talk a little bit more of that through that through the presentation today. So let's get right to it. Um, agenda today we're going to talk about is what is AI, you know, how are we using it today, and touch upon how we can help small businesses uh, coming down the road. Just to start, I'm just going to kind of give you just a high level um, overview of kind of the, where this whole AI is coming into play and some of the major parts of that. 
Um, AI is part of what we are calling the fourth industrial revolution. And we talk about that in the IT world and to make it very plain and simple, they see this time of the introduction of AI and a lot of the applications and things that are come along with it almost as they're saying it's gonna be more important than the introduction of the internet. So we are living in a time where at the end of the day, the level of importance, how this is going to be life-changing for us as humans and how we interact, how we run our businesses, how we run our personal lives is going to change. Um, that's where it's the, 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 this, this time frame that we're living in now is what it referenced to. For the purpose of today's meeting, I'm gonna again talk about artificial intelligence touch a little bit about machine learning so you understand what that comes to. And then we'll also talk about chat GPT, which is definitely what's uh, hot on the street right now. So, so what is AI? You know, AI is artificial intelligence. And it, you know, the technical, you know, the terminology is te technology that allows brain machines to mimic human brain function. But even out outside of that, it's the robotics are to learn, there's a to provide, there's gonna be problem solving, reasoning and decision-making. So it's not just about them being taught. So when I say them, whether it's be robots, software, whatever the application is, it's not just about we're teaching them to do a specific task. It is about them reasoning and coming up with the decision-making as well to mimic that of the human brain. And if not to exceed and to do better than that. Um, I want to just touch about, about what machine learning is, and that's what I'm referencing. A lot of times people think when we're talking the machine learning is what they think that artificial intelligence is. Machine learning is more on we're just going to have some types of devices, and all they're going to do, perform is a specific task and then provide the accurate results by identifying the patterns. So you're going to see some of those things. So let's say in our fast, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, we're gonna, you're gonna see that, let's say like the fast food industry where places like, let's say such as McDonald's and you're gonna see a lot of robotic interactions in very doing very simple tasks, but just wanted to give a highlight so you understand the difference of the two. And then there's good old chat GPT. So, you know, the, the, the formal definition is a natural language processing tool that's driven by the AI technology that allows you to have the human-like conversations much more than with the chat box. So the language model, you can answer questions, assist you with tasks, such as composing emails, essays, and doing code. And that's just really a very high level explanation because as we'll get into, dive into a little detail, this is a tool that definitely is going to be able to assist you, um, you know, small business owners in many of the um, business applications and operations that you're doing today. So we talk about AI, everyone thinks, you know, these are definitely some of the very general basic common examples where we're utilizing AI today. So you've got Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. So when you're utilizing those applications and people are always like, you know, I go to Pinterest and I look at one thing and then all of a sudden, you know, I come back two hours later and then it gives you a whole lot of different, a lot of the same similar um recommendations or things that you looked at before. Same thing with Facebook and those things. Those types of apps are utilizing the artificial intelligence where their software applications are basically make, taking reasoning and trying to find similar things that, uh, that you as the customer would be interested in. So that's an example of where artificial intelligence is being used. Then you've got probably one of the most common brands, cars, vehicles that we think of today, which is Tesla, which is, you know, the automated vehicle that is utilizing artificial intelligence, such as things through their machine learning and their computer visions that they utilize. Oh, okay, we see a vehicle or a person in front of us. So that's artificial intelligence telling the vehicle, okay, stop, or just we need to go to this location. So it's going to use artificial intelligence to say this is the best way in order for you to get from point A to point B. Recommendations for restaurants or whatever intelligence that you use within the vehicle. And then the other ones that we use commonly in the home or in your business, Alexa, Google Assistance and Series. Need I say more? You know, again, this is where we've seen kind of the beginning and where AI has already been incorporated in our day-to-day -day lives today. But the reality is that's just like a slither of where AI is and where is going AI going to be? It's going to be everywhere. 
Um, here, just again, I, I, I talked through some, some samples, you know, where it's going to be in healthcare. Um, you know, essentially, <clears throat> people ask, you know, where's health, where's AI going to be in healthcare? So when you talk about things like uh, in healthcare and also you know, and combine that with education, you know, at the end of the day, they'll um, use applications where the students will have, um, you know, the, the, the oh, I always forget, the virtual reality goggles, and they'll be sitting in classrooms and essentially utilizing um, applications through AI where they'll be able to perform surgeries actually sitting at a desk. Or let's say you'll go, um, you know, the, the ideal world, they talk about use cases in the medical field where when you're having your doctor's appointments and you're, instead of talking to a doctor, you actually be talking to a robot. You'll be sharing your symptoms, et cetera. And then the robot's gonna do, like we talked about, let's say with, similar to like a chat GPT, will take those symptoms, literally use the vast of majority of the information on the internet and the other parts of data that's being provided to the chat GPT or whatever software application it's using, and then provide an input to the doctor or to the folks in the medical field. And then from there, along with the doctor reviewing that information, the idealism is that there'll be a lot more accuracy in that information to the doctor. Um, you know, retail, just helping and understanding, you know, very specific as to what's selling in the stores, what's not selling into the store, the ability for customers to check out without even utilizing both, um, you know, human interaction today, which we're already experiencing in some big box stores. But then to take it into even in other areas, when you talk about, let's say hospitality in the food industry, you have areas such as like the McDonald's of the world who are utilizing robotic technology. And if you if you Google, you'll see still, um, they've got so, a few stores out in the Texas area where they only utilize like one or two employees and you literally like will pull up, provide your order and it is robots that is providing you your number one or your number seven and you show up to the to the door and it is a completely automated process um, from there. And then, you know, smart cities and smart homes where essentially you're able to do all types of applications remotely to manage your homes. But then let's talk about like sales and marketing. And in particular for the small businesses, which I'm going to get to in a little bit, where there's going to be the applications where you can use certain applications. And I know me as an entrepreneur, you know, I struggle with sometimes, you know, social media posts, putting the content, you know, how do we engage with different, uh, let's say different sectors or different customers that we're not engaging with today. You know, that's where AI can help you in pulling some information and providing you detail. You can upload content, video, posts, and then within minutes, it's going to provide you a great post with a catchy phase that's going to attract, let's say, millennials or a different um, clientele and help you providing that. Or um, let's say even with um, finance, you know, um, you know, there's areas where with AI, um, you can go on to certain sites and it'll be able to either do your taxes, it'll be able to provide you financial information that historically wasn't able to, was it not at your fingertips or that you would historically pay someone for, you'll be able to do that. Um, so again, I'm just touching on some of the different use cases from a small business perspective. Um, we work in, in my current job, you know, I, I work for Verizon, I'm a specialist, and we work with a lot of um, Fortune 100 to 500 companies. And you would just be amazed to the level of they are definitely talking about it, they're implementing it. And in, in my world, you know, we're providing the network so that these applications that are running real time are able to do it in a very fast and efficient way. So um, it's not a question of if is it coming, you know, it's definitely already here. So here I talk a little bit, and here's a, here's a slide that I pulled. You know how you know how's AI if I get more detailed in helping with the small business? And as I was talking before, better marketing strategies. You know, again, as a small business owner, those are things that I think that we all struggle with. You know, how can I better market my business? You know, what are the areas that I can pull more customers from, or et cetera? And those are some for some of us, you're able to do that ourselves. And for others, we have to pay people in order to do that. But when you start to go into applications, again, as I was stating before, like let's say the chat GPT, and there's a few others that will definitely be coming into the marketplace. Those are things, that's the type of information that you'll be able to have at your fingertips. You can give it a command. You can give it what it is, the type of business that you have. 
some ideas, and then within minutes, they'll provide you that necessary information. Um, competitive analysis, you know, kind of if you're looking at, well, other businesses that are similar to mine, you know, how are they doing things or where, where can I get a different angle or where can I do that? Again, part of the marketing strategy. That's a, another way that AI can help you um, without it being a tremendous operating expense for you for having to, you know, outsource that to that to someone else. Decision making. This is another big one. Um, a lot of time, a lot of time, business owners spend a lot of time researching stuff whether they're having to look on where do I go and purchase, you know, my next, let's say, or my next storefront, or where do I want to get stuff from my next vendor, or, um, you know, how do I maybe, maybe better allocate my funds and things like that. Again, those are time consuming uh, activities that you're needing to get the intel to help you make better business decisions. So instead of those processes taking, whether it take hours, weeks, or months for you to get that, AI is going to be able to give you the opportunity to go in, provide you some of your information, and then provide that information back to you within seconds. So again, some tools that, and I'm going to talk about this, the importance of embracing AI, and this is how it can really help you, you know, as a small business owner, get getting information that historically large corporations would pay and have a full staff to do, you're able to do that within your fingertips. And then of course, better customer service with things such as chat box, or I, I was um, had the beauty of going to a, a seminar actually with one of our, our one of our members at, at the Face Arts. They did a great entrepreneurial um, seminar down in, in good old Fayette, Fayette County. But um, they talked about that. They talked about the importance of, you know, better customer service and, you know, reaching to your customers and the importance of CRM and having, let's say, automated systems or op the opportunities where your customer comes to your page and is asking information. And instead of it necessarily being a live person answering those calls, that's someone that is able through AI or different software applications they're able to answer some of the more common questions that people would have in regards to your company and you're consistently providing or touching your customers when they're contacting you. And that's extremely important when you know customers are contacting you that you're answering that because if you don't, what ends up happening? If you don't answer that call, they go right, they, they're going right down Google page and then they're going right to going to the next person. So just some areas there where AI can really help in small businesses. And then here, just giving you just a lot more, getting more specific in some examples. Um, I'll share one with you that um, actually Justin and I had went through, um, putting together commissions contracts. And uh, Justin was talking, I actually reached out to Ariel and was saying, you know, we need to talk to an attorney about some legal documents and, you know, commission statements. And sure enough, Justin tried that. And within 30 minutes, had two versions of commission contracts for how we can go forward with some of the things that we're working to do with our art, our mobile art gallery. And so historically, that is something that we would pay someone to do. We would still probably have someone review it because again, AI and chat GP is still in its infancy stages. But again, as a business owner, this is an application and, and something that we're able to do very quickly. Again, being in the art industry, we're not attorneys, but we're able to get contracts at, the, at, at our fingertips. Um, and then for other folks, you know, writing a resume, writing a book, creating a website. Um, I talked a little bit about marketing and social media posts. You know, you're going to be able to create your own posts and they're creative outside of maybe what you might historically do, you know, right there at your fingertips. Um, security and fraud. There's going to be things that even though we're talking about all this exciting stuff, it is going to introduce areas where you're going to need to tighten up from a security perspective and check for fraud um, in regards to maybe people Im trying to imitate, get, you know, information, um, et cetera. In the art and film industry, um, you know, as someone is in the art world as well, you know, we've gone to events where, you know, we just put on some goggles and then they're showing us ways in making art or um, essentially doing digital imaging where historically you would never be able to do that before. Artificial intelligence is giving a lot of folks the opportunity to do that. The film industry, you know, they're on strike right now. You know, this is affecting them. You know, artificial AI is giving people the opportunity to go in and say, write me a film or a short story on X 
um, topic. And sure enough, it'll provide an entire film or script out to folks. I mean, th this is life changing, you know, so people who historically might have taken years for you to able to do that, now you're able to do that in your fingertips. So um, help you make music videos, I mean, e-training. I mean, we, we could be here all day talking about ways, but I hope uh, this kind of gets your mind going as to some of the areas that it can help you with. Before I go on, women, any questions or maybe just maybe thought provoking for any folks? Anyone see where that might be able to help them in their industry or business? Uh, you're on mute, Ariel. We'll let them drop it in the questions if they have any. Um, okay. The chat is wide open, guys. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and drop it in. Okay. Um, here, I just talk about just just, just some AI. Um, again, I'm not endorsing any. Um, I'm not here endorsing any any apps. Um, I, again, I, I sell more of the networks to support these, but just doing some homework and kind of seeing, you know, what's out there. What you know, what are people using? So, chat, chat GPT. Yeah, there's no question. This is the hot one. Uh, you know, people are using it. Students are using it. In this, people in the industry are using it. Ask your children about it. If you don't know about it, I'm sure they know about it. So definitely uh, they're from there. And then these are just some of just a few examples. This one called Doom. And this is where I talked about, you know, creating video content for um, TikTok and IG. Um, I know that this is a big topic that we talk about with a lot of our clients and how do they engage the millennial uh, and Gen X um, generations um, based on their products and services. So this allows you to take your videos, upload that and provide you content and ready to go post um, for TikTok and IG. One click summarizer. This is one you're needing research on just about any topic. Um, it's gonna provide you a summary PDF and research document on that document. So again, something that may take you half a day, a week. I mean, I know many of times there's things that I've needed to research for our business and, you know, week one, week two, we're like, we still haven't wrapped our hands around this concept or thing. These are the types of applications that would provide that information to us in our fingertips. Time Hero. Um, this is an opportunity where, you know, you connect your e Gmail and apps, providing your project list, and it's going to give you your to-do list and prioritization, like if you had an assistant. Um, you know, something that, you know, many of us, I know um, this is conversations many, me and many entrepreneurs have had is, you know, I could use an assistant. And so, but maybe not have the funding in order to do that. So this is an application for our understanding that's able to do that. So, I mean, again, this is just like a snapshot of some of the things available. But if you were to Google maybe areas that you're needing some help in, assistance, or what the case may be, um, you know, don't hesitate to go online and put that in and see if there's something that's able to assist you. So while we did talk about all the good things in where uh, AI can help our um, uh, his businesses, here are some concerns. These, these are definitely conversations that come up and people are concerned of, you know, what, what where AI is going with this. So fraud, you know, concern about fraud is with AI, and, I, and I've watched even a show about this, you know, companies could take your voice and they just need a small snippet of your voice and then they can do a full presentation and you would never know that that is not the individual that's speaking because the voice is spot on. So that's a concern. You know, they're taking people's faces, you know, famous individuals or whatever the case may be and doing concerts or videos or whatever. And you're thinking that uh, music is thinking that's an individual's. Unemployment. People's concern that AI is going to take away all the jobs. Um, do I think that it will replace some jobs? Yes, I, I think definitely. Like we're seeing that, like let's say in the food industry, within the retail industry, we're see, going to see where that's going to take away some jobs. And that's why I talk a little bit later about you really need to embrace it and work on how AI can help you and get ahead of the curve and to be in fields that are growing. Um, security again kind of goes a little bit in regards to fraud ensuring things such as, you know, automated dialers or people that are sending the different emails or really making it seem like it's the company that's on the front end, but actually is not. So be definitely concerned there. Along with theft, I think that that speaks for itself. 
And then people talk about the human race and interaction, you know, are we going to lose a lot of the essence because, um, you know, people ask a lot, you know, so are the robots, robots going to take over, you know, you know, what we, what, you know, the human race. And, you know, again, I know that those are things that are all conversation pieces and that um, those that are building these technologies are definitely at the forefront and trying to address today. And then inaccuracies, inaccuracies in the information. So I was at a conference last week and, you know, that was one of the big keys that a lot of the companies were talking about and the importance of all of this is based on data that's out there, but we've got to make sure that the data is good. So I definitely would state that as you look to utilize AI, again, we're in an infancy stage. So you definitely, when you utilize these applications, you still got to review it. You still need a human to make sure that what is being what is what is being provided works for you and that is the right information. So definitely would uh would definitely uh stay to check that. And then to wrap it up, you know, AI is here. Uh, not that it's coming, it's here. So as I was just saying before, you know, learn it, you know, YouTube, talk to individuals, pay attention. It's on the news every night on the news, whether <laughs> almost every news station is talking about how AI is um, is part of our days today. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. Last week, ironically, I was at the TAG conference and Andre Dickens, the our, our city of a mayor of um, city of Atlanta mayor, was there talking about technology, the digital divide, how they're trying to essentially bring technology into the city of Atlanta. Um, and then along with that, you know, their CIO spoke and talking in the importance of how AI, IoT, machine learning, all these technologies are so important to traffic, crime, you know, and servicing the cities of Atlanta. And then ironically, two hours later, we had the mass shooting in Atlanta. But it was the technology, this, it was the technology and AI applications that they had is how they were able to find the gentleman in Cobb County and was able to bring it to closure. So it's just an example of the importance of how these technologies are really here to help us. Um, it's just a question again of you got to embrace it, but then also be cautious as I was stating as well. So um, again, I can talk all day in regards to this, but um, definitely wanted to just come and talk with you all and kind of give you definitely an overview, get your minds for some of you you, this, you may already know a lot about this and this is this is not new to you, but for those of you that it is new to you, definitely to get your wheels turning and to think on how these um, these tech kind of technologies can help you all to become, you know, to help your business and to become better businessmen and businesswomen. So um, thank you, Sandra. I want to jump in because you have yep. a couple questions um, and okay. I'm going to bring up my slide as well. So awesome. the question is with OpenAI, is there a channel or source that you can refer us to to show the best use of prompts? Um, and the second question is, does this work for blog posts and newsletters? We know the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, the, now the first one I, I could definitely, I can definitely follow up on that because again, I'm not one that necessarily writes code or would know to that level, but I can definitely take that question. So uh, we definitely wanna note that Ariel. And I'll be more than happy to follow up in regards to that. Okay. Blogs, posts, and newsletters. Yeah, that's definitely something where it's already being done today. So yeah, that's definitely, <laughs> uh, and AI is definitely something where you're able to utilize um, to write your, help you with your writing, with your blogs and your newsletters. So I, I, I told Sandra before we started this morning how, um, I, I put in sign. Matter of fact, let me go ahead. Um, you can stop sharing. I'll stop sharing. Okay. Um, I put inside the AI that's within my CRM system, which I use constant contact. Constant contact you can use for emails, newsletters, you can use for social media, a host of things. Um, so I put in just a uh, a prompt to say, send out something about membership, joining membership. So if you got an email this morning about 7 a.m. because it was timed, I did not send that out this morning. It was already scheduled. 
AI wrote that email. <laughs> so, you know, it's just amazing. Okay. Um, all the things that can be done. Um, and, and when you are a small business, you want to make sure you're maximizing your time to the fullest of your ability. I have more concerns about people who do. Um, I know we have some members who do, um, who literally their, their business is creating content and writing. And I was I'm more concerned about them um, because I, I don't know how they're going to survive um, outside of maybe creating some own, their own version of a chat GPT. Um, and, and I don't know if that's something, you know, Sandra, that can be done, <laughs> but you tell me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that that would be a, that would be an example of them really embracing technology and coming up with their own type of platform in regards to that. Now, I mean, keep in mind again, you know, there are some people regardless they're going to want that customer that human interaction and they're not going to be comfortable going to these types of platforms. So, that's there. But it is it is it is a reality as I keep saying we're such in our infancy. Folks who are doing that really need to kind of learn to pivot in their business and see how their, you know, the, the, the business that they're in today, how do you turn that around so that it, it, it complements with this whole AI strategy? And, and, and I'm going to give you the examples what we've all gone through for COVID. COVID was such a wake-up call that businesses really had to pivot how they did business. And the, the companies that survived were the ones that were able to pivot and adapt to that. Um, so yeah, I would say to whoever are those that are doing the blogging and the content, look at ways in which you can maybe do more of a personalized or some type of application. Or take a version of it and then personalize it some kind of way. I don't know. Um, yeah. But uh, Sandra hit on 99% of this. I just wanted to make sure, because we also had another question. If you are starting, I have already started a book, <laughs> will it assist you in finishing that book? Uh, Sandra, I'll let you take that away. Yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely believe that 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 is able to be done. You can start writing the book and then that's where you would upload some of that information and then it would provide that back to you. And that, that would, I believe is through the, through a chat GPT, or there may be an app. Again, I'm not an app specialist, but that there's an app specifically for writing books of the sort. So, um, I would definitely, uh, say a yes to that. For sure. <laughs> so, so let me just say this. She's already, um, Sandra's already mentioned a lot of this stuff. So I don't want to um, repeat it, but bottom line is AI is here. We really need to embrace this technology. What Sandra didn't mention was why is this explosion happening? Um, and I think it's, um, we, we spoke about it. One, because there were so many people that quit the great resignation that happened in, I think it was what, the end of 2021, mm -hmm. where the small businesses had to get really creative about how do we actually hire in, in what's happening now? Um, well, <laughs> those who um, understand the way how things work, we were like, wait a minute, you got to figure out a way where we can operate without humans. And that's exactly what they have done. And that's where this creation has come from. Um, and Sandra, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, as I talk about with my job at Verizon, and um, those are those are day-to-day -day conversations. So I know this is on a high level, but some of our large companies here in Atlanta with COVID, when you ask executives, like, what's the biggest thing on their mind right now? One of them is labor reduction or their inability to get labor. They'd experienced that through COVID. So they literally will have what we call, what we kind of, kind of call like the smart cities. And they'll have areas where the, the, the sending of packages is completely robotic and autonomous. There are no humans on the floor. And everything is being done utilizing the machine learning I talked about in robotics or um, robotic vehicles. So these are things that are talked about on a consistent basis where these industries are going. So that's why the importance of, I tell people to kind of do their homework, see what's going on and find you find a niche for what you do today and how you incorporate technology from there. Because again, um, with COVID, it was mind opening for a lot of areas on how business change and this industrial revolution is definitely 
sparking that because now we see business can continue in a different light. So they're looking to, to, to capitalize that on that and move forward. And, and let me say this, this is why I love entrepreneurs because at the end of the day, you know, when, when <laughs> the resignation happened, we figured out, well, wait a minute, we're not going to sit on our laurels. We're going to figure out one way. How do we, how do we push automation? That was one of the things that we pushed from this organization. And then we also partnered with ADP to figure out, okay, well, if you have businesses that absolutely need a person, how do we get um, some things in place where you can hire the right people and provide certain things. But what people were, weren't understanding is you're quitting, but in the meantime, people are revolutionizing, replacing your job. <laughs> um, and I think that is the double-edged sword. So, you know, that's the interesting thing. So when you see a lot of issues with the labor market, you know, some of that is, is their, their fault. <laughs> um, the other thing too, I want to make sure these are just some um, apps that, you know, I have looked at, I have used, I have grabbed. Um, so we're all familiar with Canva. We'll probably end up needing to do a whole session on Canva, but Canva now has AI. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. So literally, it, you can, and I, and I didn't even pull up the, um, the graphics, but you can literally say, Hey, um, give me a black woman in China doing business. And literally it will spit out an image. Um, when I tell you that AI is here, I am telling you it is amazing. Please, please, please gravitate towards it for your business. Um, I mentioned constant contact. So I didn't write any email that went out this morning, but that email was written and it sounded so human and it sounded like it was full with emotion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, find your, you know, that is all AI. I didn't write anything. I literally just said, do something about membership. And that's exactly what it spit out, you know? Um, and then it'll give you different options. Um, everybody doesn't use constant contact. Some people may use MailChimp. I don't know if MailChimp has an AI proportion, but AI is a part of, I think they're still in beta, um, meaning it's not fully launched um, as it relates to um, constant contact, but those who have constant contact are seeing that you can use AI and it'll help you create post social media, all that good stuff. Um, Stable diffusion, hour one, all of these things create video. So I was trying to see if I could find those who create like webinars, um, like what we're doing now. <laughs> well, I'm a little more animated, so I'm using my hands and everything else, but you absolutely have the ability to upload your photo, type whatever you need to type, and it shoots out the video. I mean, amazing. That means I can be doing a thousand other things while this is doing whatever it needs to do and put it on autopilot. I mean, how amazing is that? Um, of course, chat GBT, GPT, which has gotten a lot of attention. Uh, I'm going to tell you now, we're behind. The kids already knew about it. So that's why when Sandra said <laughs> actually kids, because my daughter was like, oh yeah, I use that to answer a question. And I'm like, what? I we didn't have time to do an essay. So I used that to draw, right? I said, wait a minute, what? <laughs> so we were already behind. I said, well, now I need to catch up um, because it has been getting so much attention from it replacing people. Um, it's just a lot of information, but you do need to vet it. You do need to make sure that the information is accurate. But when I tell you that it can do a lot, it absolutely can do a lot. And you would go to the chatgpt.com. Um, that's the website. You have a free version. You have a paid version. You'll be amazed at what it can actually create. Um, and then I know Google has their own. They're trying to push out Bard and Meta's Llama. I don't know too much about them. I haven't tried them, uh, but I have absolutely tried ChatGPT and it's amazing. So um, 
Again, we've already been using AI from Siri to Alexa to Google Assistant to all these other things from Tesla. It's just, why is it getting so much attention now? It's because of it being so human-like and area and entering every area that I think, I don't think people were really prepared for, but it's not going to get any better. Um, it's just time to make sure that you're able to do more with it. So a lot of these things, Sandra already hit on. Um, I know a lot of people have even seen the photography thing. That's another area that I'm a little concerned about for some of our folks. Um, if you do photography, some of these, you don't even need to do head. Well, I don't want to say you shouldn't do headshots. <laughs> um, I think you can marry the two, you know, maybe if you're in between headshots or whatever the case is, but I can promise you that there are ways that you can create more professional photos and consistently um, with just this AI. It's literally um, changing a lot. Um, pitch decks, emails, letters, marketing plans, everything it literally can do. Um, Again, Sandra's already mentioned this. Embrace the technology. Determine how it can work for you. What areas of your business can you streamline um, to allow technology to work for you? And what AI can you implement for your users of your business, your customers? Um, and work with the technology, not against it. Uh, because I, I'm, I'm fearful that you really will not be able to beat that. <laughs> so it is important to just work with it and not against it. Um, anything else? Does anybody else have, I'm, I'm seeing questions. Does anybody else have any questions, comments? Um, oh, I didn't suggest automation, uh, Demetria. I, I totally told y'all to get automated. <laughs> yeah, she was like, when in the cohort, she suggested, I suggest the um, automation. We absolutely taught automation. And I don't know any cohort that was teaching automation. So now I think a lot of folks are behind. So I'm so glad we're having this conversation. I haven't seen a whole lot of people. Now I'm seeing more folks trying to, even the government, which is a little bit slower sometimes, um, try to uh, have these conversations because they're, they're realizing that there are a lot of industries that this is gonna impact. I mean, we're talking about contracts, but what about attorneys? you know, outside of them having to represent you in court, there are some things that you're not going to need them for um, outside of that. So what are your questions, comments, anything else that we're missing um, that we have not answered for you? I want to make sure we give you guys an opportunity. If you want to come on like your voice, we can unmute you, you can do that as well. But I do wanna make sure that we are allowing you an opportunity to ask questions. Um, I think this would be great even just, you know, you really wanna look up to see, like uh, Sandra said, Google what, uh, what your areas are. For example, you know, if you are doing, you know, the interior design, there may be something for that. If, if they're doing things with art, I'm pretty sure they'd have renderings for architecture, <laughs> you know, um, all day, every day. You know, how can that streamline your business? I know we have interior design. I know um, it's just a lot it can do, guys. I, I promise you. Um, so what are your questions, comments, anything before we break or end, rather? All right, so no more questions or comments. Are you guys excited? <laughs> Let, let's do that. Are you excited about this and what, what the possibilities are? are? Are you fearful? So put in the chat, excited or fearful. I mean, it could be either one. <laughs> All right, somebody's using Canva now, okay. Oh, oh Vanessa, you use it, okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. 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 People are excited. Okay. That's good. That's, that's good. good. Yeah. <laughs> Some yeah. said they're both. I get it. I yeah. understand. Um, yeah. I'm in the industry. I'm nervous. So, yeah. 
<laughs> no. Well, I, so well you're probably you're probably seeing some things that we hadn't even talked about yet. Uh, yeah, that's why I said this is just an introductory kind of. <laughs> yeah introductory presentation just kind of you know getting people's feet wet but um absolutely but yeah it's, I, I can understand how people are concerned but again that's why you gotta you gotta learn about it and you know feel free if anyone has any questions definitely feel free to reach out to me i'm on linkedin so if you you, you have a question you want to talk want to run something by me by all means and ai is great and let me just tell you this i was in buckhead um at, at a parking garage and they were like, um, I don't even know what it said, but I know I didn't put in my, my license plate. So I didn't know how it got my license. <laughs> but all I know is by the time I got there, it somehow read my license plate and was like, you can, I mean, it was just crazy. And I was like, now, no live person. Oh, this is what I also wanted to share with you. So Nourish and Bloom, Nourish and Bloom, we went to that, um, uh, ribbon cutting, what was that, a year and a half ago or so? Yep. They're out in Fayette County in Trillis. They are the first mm-hmm. Black autonomous grocery store in the entire world. What does that yep. mean? If you have not um, been to Nourish and Bloom, first of all, in Fayette County, I will tell you they are coming to Henry. They have been approved and they going, they're, they're getting a lot. It's a larger one. It's going to be a large oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a larger grocery store. But the reason I say that is because the technology that was used to create that store was something we had never, ever seen before in the, well, actually, I don't think even the United States, but I know they're the black, first Black one in the yeah. entire world. Um, what that means is they don't have you don't need a person to check you out of the grocery store. Every single thing is run by computers, AI. Um, they have the robots and their their robots are put inside of, they're in Trillith, so they can deliver food, et cetera. So if you've not had a chance to actually visit, um, I encourage you to go visit Nourish and Bloom. It is an experience. You have to have an app. Once you pull something off the shelf, the shelf has a system built in it that it automatically determines what has been taken, the weight of it, et cetera, et cetera. You pay to check out, you're using an app for that. Nothing requires that you have interactions with a live person. So I I can, when I tell you, listen, it's here. So honestly, as entrepreneurs, we really need to be thinking, how do we get in on this outside of just using it to automate our business and streamline it? How do we also put our foot, you know, in there to say, hey, let's let's be a part of this because we know this is where things are going. Um, So I would encourage you to think about that as well, uh, because that's the nature of entrepreneurs is creating something and, and solving a problem. So um, definitely, yeah. definitely, I want to just put that out there. And if I could add to that, was like a great example, um, Ariel, in regards to that, because so when you go to State Farm Arenas, that's an application that's been sold to them. It, we call it we call it cashier check cashierless checkout. And so with that, you're going into these arenas. If you notice, Mercedes-Benz Stadium is a completely, there is no cash transactions. And a lot of places are going to that. And in the case of cashierless checkout, it's the same concept as Nourish and Bloom. You'll go into the store, you go into the area, you'll get your food, you'll get your drink or whatever the case may be, and no transaction is needed. So we're going to be seeing that in the day-to-day. Um, and that will be, um, they'll be doing that at the State Farm Arena. So you're touching on not only like with Nourish and Bloom, that is going to be how we'll be interacting, um, you know, at some of these major event venues in, in the Atlanta area. So, um, but yeah, shout out to, to Nourish and Bloom for being a black business that um, took that technology early on yep. and uh, kudos to them. Absolutely. And they're supposed to do about 800 more stores, guys. And I know they're always looking for investors. So tap in. <laughs> um, one of the other things, so Vanessa's asking, how does it help your individual business? I thought we kind of hit on that. <laughs> um, but we looked at the app 
um, and those particular things that you're using to basically, so for you, she's a dance school. Um, now, what do you think about that outside of her? Because we've already provided information on how she can interact with her parents or customers. Now, what else can she do as it relates to um, the dance school, Sandra? Um, I mean, I'd probably say, I don't know how she's doing her advertising and, you know, getting more customers, but, you know, taking clips of the different, um, the instruction, like instructional within the class or um, actual recitals and putting that on. I mean, my daughters were in dance and that's something as one of the, mo um, this was some time back, but as a mom, you know, I was trying to go to websites and actually getting a feel for what is the dance class like? How are the recitals going? Giving a lot of these apps, you can also Google yourself to see uh, what you can create that can actually streamline what you're doing now to answer your question. So I don't know why we're frozen, but we're gonna move on because I know we have a hard stop. So guys, if you have any other questions, please send us an email at info at scwibga.org. And again, Thank you for joining us at AI and Your Business. Have an amazing Monday. <laughs> All right. Have a good one.